Hello everybody! Today is going to be a hodgepodge video. I'm going to talk about what I read this past week, I'm going to talk about what I'm currently reading, what I'm going to take with me on vacation, because I'm leaving very, very early on Monday morning, like 4 a.m. on Monday morning. I'm going to have a lot of time in a car to just entertain myself. Um, I'm also going to talk very quickly about projects because I'm going to take my knitting with me. Um, so let's start with the things that I've read this past week. I finished my audiobook, which was The Madman and the Professor by Simon Winchester. I could probably spend a lot of time talking about this book and what was so interesting about it, but also what was frustrating about the organization of the book and the way that Winchester chose to portray some stuff. I don't know. I would describe this as a dual biography of two very different and yet also very similar men who worked on the Oxford English Dictionary project, the first edition, or compiling the first edition, from like the 1890s to the 1910s. Um, one of them was committed to an insane asylum for 30 plus years. Um, and was a prolific contributor to the OED project as a volunteer reader. And the other was like the chief editor of the OED project, and they did meet and get to know each other. Um, I found it mostly interesting because of the life story of the, the madman of the title. I think his name was William Charles Minor. Um, he, as far as I can tell, he had schizophrenia, or what would eventually become known as schizophrenia, and it was a very interesting how his life turned out with an basically undiagnosed, incurable mental illness. Um, things could have gone a lot worse. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was a very interesting story. I object to how much Winchester interrupted his own narrative, though. It was kind of disorienting to listen to it on audiobook without any cues from the formatting or the table of contents. Um, he also repeats a sensationalized story about these two men meeting for the first time. He presents it as fact first to hook you at the beginning, and then he builds up to it again as a climax. And only then, 60% of the way into the book, does he tell you it's completely and utterly false. And I really didn't like the way that he used a lie <laughs> to structure a story around it. Um, this this irritated me. It probably won't irk other people. I get the reason why he probably did it is that it's the story that interests most people in these two men. It's probably, I think, the story that he said he heard, and so the point of the book is to get around explaining why that story is false and literally ripped from the headlines, but I spent a lot of this book thinking it was the true meeting, and then it was not, and I felt misled. Anyway, um, it was definitely an interesting book, um, though a bit flawed perhaps in its approach, and I'll probably try some other things by Winchester in the future. Very, very recently, like 15 minutes ago, I finished The Hollow Places by T. Kingfisher. This is um, Ursula Vernon's latest horror novel under her pen name. Um, I've been buddy reading this with Rhea, and I apologize to them for finishing it way faster. <laughs> I knew I needed to get it finished before leaving. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed this. I'd say it's about the same level of scary as um, the Twisted Ones, but perhaps more body horror. Um, there were some elements of it that got to me a little bit more, and the ending was way more intense than the ending of the Twisted Ones. So I enjoyed it, and it has um, it has Vernon's kind of easy, practical, and humorous style. I really enjoy her characters and everything, so it was quite good. I also finished um, another buddy read earlier in the week. I read Precursor by C.J. Cherry with Kazen from Always Doing. I loved this book. I really, really loved it. Um, yeah, I mean, I have intense nostalgia for the first book in this series, and this this is the fourth. Um, but I think that just trying to be kind of objective about it, this is the best novel out of the first four. 
it'll be very interesting to see what the other two books in the second trilogy are like. I'm, I really, really want to finish those out. So um, Kazan and I will be trying to fit in um, buddy reads of the next two books before the end of the year. Uh, so I think the next one is Defender, and I'll be reading that in November for an A to Z reading challenge, which I may or may not have time to do some sort of TBR video for probably like the first week of November or something when I've already started reading for it. But anyway, I love Love Precursor, can't wait to get to the next book. And then the other two things I have to talk about are comics. I finished the Giant Days series with volume 14. I loved this very much. <laughs> um, I had a really weird experience with volume 13 because I, I truly, like, well and truly thought that one was the end of the series, and so I read it as if it were the end, and it clearly wasn't, and it was very discombobulating, and I didn't like it very much. And then I found out that it had been extended a little bit with volume 14, so this is the proper end, and it actually delivered the end this time, and I really enjoyed it. It's not perfect. I would have preferred a little bit more Daisy, whereas it's, as, as usual, quite focused on, on Esther but I enjoyed it. And you know that something has ended well when you just have that rush of emotion at the end and you want to go all the way back to the beginning and read everything all over again. So I may very well do that. This has definitely been one of the most successful comics I've read from beginning to end, and yeah, so good. And surprisingly, I also read a collection of bonus Lumberjane stories. This one is called Campfire Songs. It is not one of the numbered volumes in the series. I think that these are probably various one-shot issues that guest writers and guest artists did over the past couple of years. Um, so every issue in this varies a lot in length. A couple are quite long, a couple are only a few pages long. Um, one of them was written by Shauna McGuire and is one of, one of the uh, better ones, actually. I really enjoyed this. It, it wasn't as good as the early volumes in the series were, that's for sure, but for a bunch of bonus stories that don't super connect to the main plot, it was good, and I really liked the writing in all of them, and I really liked the artwork. Um, the only exception was, like, the very last one. It was a crossover with Misfits, and I enjoyed Misfits, but I didn't care for that one. I thought it was kind of boring. It was, like, um, murder mystery dinner slash haunted house thing, and I could have cared less. Um, and then, after I read this, I found out that Lumberjanes is ending, which is the thing that I've wanted to know about for years. Like, when will this series wrap it up? It's ending in December. Only a couple more issues are going to be published. <laughs> And I did not know about that until very recently. So I think I'm going to stick it out until the end. Uh, there will only maybe be three or four more volumes of this series, and I will read them and see how it ends as long as I can get them from the library. I'm not going to go back to buying this series, that's for sure, but I have some hope um, based on some reviews I've seen of future issues that I will actually like the direction it goes in for the end and kind of getting back to some of the longer running story arcs and questions and everything about the Lumberjanes camp. So that was really quite successful. Um, the only unsuccessful thing I had with my reading this week was that I did DNF a book. I DNF'd Baba Yaga Laid an Egg by Dubravka Ograsic, which I felt kind of bad about because it's an otherwise award winner. as the first book I've DNF'd for that particular award, but it, it wasn't working for me. It just wasn't my type of book, wasn't my type of story, and I really didn't like the way it was written, and I really didn't like the characters, so I, I let it go. I think I read almost 40% of it, which is a really good try. <laughs> Usually I would DNF things much faster than that. But other than that, everything else I read this week was, like, really good. <laughs> So now let's talk about what I am currently reading and what I'm taking with me on vacation. Um, I'm still reading The Red First Light by Linda Nagata. I actually haven't read any more of this since I talked about it in my last Friday Reads update. Um, I just have been focused on finishing library books instead, so I'll be taking that one with me on my Kindle for vacation. Um, I am also reading a novel in this collection. Um, this is The Collected Fiction of Lena Krohn, and I am reading the novel in this. It's called Datura or the... De what, what? 
the Torah or a delusion we all see. I keep getting that wrong. Um, it's a short novel and I will probably finish it tomorrow. Um, I've had this for years and it's taken me this long to read it. I'm really enjoying it. It's about a woman who works as a sub editor at a like paranormal activity magazine and it's a lot of stuff that she learns from various subscribers to the magazine, various people who come into her office and want to talk to her about their monomanias like ethnobotany and the sound of silence and stuff. And I just find it very interesting. It's uh, about also like reality being a delusion like what what is perception how can we all be sure that we're perceiving the world the way it really is um also about datura which is a poisonous flower and it's just it's very interesting um so i will probably speed my way through that once i am done filming this video and then i probably won't finish it by the time i leave but i'm going to start pet by akweke amezi today I, I've been trying to catch up on my watch later list here on YouTube and I have just seen like four people in a row talk about this book in their wrap ups from earlier in the year because I'm very behind on watching people's videos. And I thought, well, I have it checked out from the library. I need to start reading this book. So I'm going to start this. We'll see if I finish it or not. It's pretty short actually. Like it's very short. It's 200 pages long, so maybe I'll finish this before I leave tomorrow as well. Not leave tomorrow, leave the day after tomorrow. <sighs> so, um, the other book I'll be taking with me on vacation is The Relentless Moon by um, Mary Robinette Kowal. Um, I will be restarting this. I think I mentioned before I was a little over, oh, a little over three chapters into it and I need to restart it because I haven't read any of it in like three months, so. Um, I will also be taking my Kindle with me because I'm only taking one physical book and everything else is going to be on my Kindle. And I've got a lot of really interesting things loaded up and ready to go, including the new Penric and Desdemona novella, which is called Masquerade in Lodi. It just came out a week or two ago. I've been saving it for a special occasion. Um, I have A Fly Away by Kathleen Jennings, which is a novella that I really want to read. I think it's kind of gothic or horror, which means it'll probably be appropriate for the week before Halloween. Um, I have The Heroine's Journey by Gail Carriger, which is a nonfiction book about the heroine's journey in fiction. Um, and I also have When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole, which is her new thriller. Um, I was planning on reading uh, more of her romance next, and then my hold on this came up and I thought, I'm going to check it out and see what the hype is about. Plus a lot of other things because I have a lot of unread ebooks, but that's enough for now. So uh, we'll see how much of that stuff I actually end up reading while I'm on vacation because <laughs> I think like many people, I overestimate how much I'm going to read when I'm out and about doing things with friends and family and stuff. The other thing that I'm going to take with me is uh, projects to keep my hands busy. No one's surprised by this. I am definitely taking my Mafati wrap and I thought I would show you um, what this currently looks like because I've worked so much on it since I last showed it. Um, I'm almost 50% of the way through. I'm, I will probably finish up the first uh, half of my yarn today. So it's getting quite long. This is the, the, the right side, which is dominant green, but let me turn this around and try to not wrap myself in yarn at the same time. Um, this side I think looks a lot better with the uh, the brown against the green background. So I'm calling this the, the right side for my purposes, but it, it's a shawl. You can wear it whatever way you want to. Um, so yeah, I think it looks very cool. I'm very pleased with it and I am slowly getting better at cabling, very slowly. And then there's one other thing that I want to take with me uh, because while this is actually plain knitting, I mean, even the brioche cables are dead simple. I don't have to refer to the pattern at all. It's a lot of mindless knitting, but I kind of want to cast on a pair of socks because I got a skein of yarn in the mail and I really want to knit it up. Um, I was thinking for most of the year about treating myself to a yarn advent calendar. 
They're horrendously expensive though, so I decided to settle for a single skein of yarn. So I got the Stranded Dye Works um, 2020 Christmas colorway, which is called Zooming Home for Christmas. Um, I love Stranded Dye Works. Um, she's Amy Florence on YouTube, and I watch her uh, Stranded podcast religiously now. And I just had to get it. I really like this particular colorway. I wouldn't say it's like super, super Christmassy, but I love the colors and I love the way that it knits up in socks. So I'm thinking I'm going to cake up this yarn today and start a pair of vanilla socks. Because it's such a variegated colorway, I don't think I can really do much without the pattern being lost in the colors. Um, so I'm not gonna do anything super fancy. I'll probably do vanilla socks and try out a fish lips kiss heel for the first time. So it'll be mostly plain knitting and I'll learn a different method of turning a heel. So I'll probably take that with me as well, but I can't take everything with me. <laughs> so that is pretty much it for me. I should be back in a week or so um, when my computer is rebuilt and functioning again and I have access to editing software again. Um, I'm, I'm still very nervous about that, though I know it will, it will go fine. Um, I have switched computers before. I know how this works. And I don't even have to rebuild my computer on my own. My brother's going to do it for me. So, yeah. Uh, but anyway, until I talk to you guys again soonish, <laughs> thank you for watching and happy reading and all that fun stuff.